Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Susan Kokindo at LaRouche Pack with another podcast on Donald Trump's Agenda 47, uh, the policies he intends to implement when he becomes the 47th President of the United States. Um, I'm joined, as I always am, uh, by Brian Lance in Houston. Hi, Brian. Howdy. Good to be here. Good to have you back. Uh, Brian and I have done about eight podcasts previously, which you can see on our YouTube channel and on LaRouche Pack, and I encourage you to do so. Um, but we have a special guest today, and uh, that is Brian Panabaker, uh, who is a person who formed Auto Workers for Trump, uh, I guess back in 2016. But Brian, why don't you give people a little bit of background in terms of uh, how you've been part of this fight? Sure, Susan. Thank you. Um, uh, Auto Workers for Trump, which is a Facebook group that I formed, was actually started just after Donald Trump was um, elected. So it was in 2017, early 2017. Um, my role prior to that in the campaign was uh, I had an opportunity to meet Donald Trump, the candidate. I told him about a venue here in the uh, Detroit area actually in Macomb County, which is known as the home of the Reagan Democrats. And I suggested that if he came back to Michigan uh, anymore before the election, he should try to use that venue because it was a military themed outdoor venue that would hold many more people than uh, the venue he had appeared at the junior college uh, gymnasium, basically where he had come a couple of times that only held two or 3000. The outdoor venue held 7,500. It was uh, military themed, and and the key point was that it was located right in the uh, industrial corridor that runs from south to north through Macomb County, where all the auto plants are located along the railroad tracks. And I I made the point to Mr. Trump that if he came into uh, Macomb County, home of the Reagan Democrats, and he asked for the UAW workers support much as Ronald Reagan did when he was running in 1980 and he got that support he might win Macomb County big enough to carry the entire state of Michigan and I told him Mr. Trump if you win Michigan we both know what that means you win the White House so I could almost see the light bulb go on over his head he turned to his aides told them when we come back to M Michigan we're coming to Macomb County and I gave them some information about this venue uh, called Freedom Hill. And uh, sure enough, two days before the election, um, on Sunday before the Tuesday election in 2016, he came back. Um, I was able to uh, get an expedited entry um, wristband and sat right in the front row directly in front of Donald Trump because I had told them about this venue. We packed 15,000 people into a venue that's only rated to seat 7,500 because it has an outdoor hill and, there, and the fire marshals allowed them to pack people in there in standing room only. So we doubled the capacity. And um, two days later, exactly the scenario that I'd laid out to Mr. Trump happened. He won Macomb County by over 50,000 votes. He only won the state of Michigan by 10,704. So he won Macomb County big enough to carry the entire state of Michigan. And the rest is history. So uh, Donald Trump, re I think, remembered that. Uh, he went on during his term to repeal the horrible NAFTA agreement that had been signed into law in the 1980s that shipped a lot of our jobs, uh, auto manufacturing jobs down to Mexico and other places and instituted instead a much better agreement called the USM USMCA, the United States Canada Mexico agreement. And that leveled the playing field in terms of wages and, and a number of different things that made it a much for, uh, fairer agreement for uh, American workers. So the American auto workers that I know and the people that I was exposed to love Donald Trump. And I've, I've always told any politician that I spoke to about courting the um, union vote, you have to remember that there's the UAW leadership, which is corrupt and in bed with the Democrats. And then there's the UAW membership, which is blue collar and shares traditional family values 
And these are middle middle class working people that really support Donald Trump. So politicians, Donald Trump included, need to speak to the membership, not the leadership. Well, I have to say, I remember that uh, Macomb rally two days before the election. If I remember correctly, it was early in the morning. People started lining up. It was sleeting. It was snowing. And it didn't stop Michiganders from showing up for Donald Trump. We really packed 15,000 people into Freedom Hill. And Donald Trump uh, spoke to us. He spoke to manufacturing and energy issues things that are really important to the car industry. And I think that's what's gonna get him back into the White House um, and help him win Michigan again is that uh, energy is at the core of the automobile industry. And I'm not talking about windmills and uh, solar power. I'm talking about good old fashioned oil and gas powered engines, pickup trucks. And um, that's gonna lead uh, uh, the agenda and the uh, type of, things that he's uh, going to talk about to get him back in in 2024. Well, I think he definitely has the message because when he was here uh, in Michigan about a month ago, speaking at a fundraiser, uh, he was very, very clear on precisely these questions of trade uh, and how electric vehicles are going to decimate the auto industry. I want to turn to the other Brian, Brian Lance. Uh, because not too long after President Trump was here in Michigan, and his speech, I think, was very much geared toward auto workers, uh, he released a new Agenda 47 proposal, uh, which I think sharpens uh, his appeal to auto workers. Uh, you want to fill us in on that? Yeah, well, yes, sure, Susan. Uh, and, and Brian, good to be here with you. Um, First of all, look, I, I, of course, Trump with, uh, Trump with Agenda 47 is, is laying out turning the means of turning the U.S. into a manufacturing superpower. Um, we've had nine straight months of contracting manufacturing in the United States. These last nine months under uh, the, the Biden collective, uh, we need a, a whole of, uh, of nation effort to rebuild. Um, uh, it's, it's just absolutely critical. Um, energy, um, you know, the, the Biden collective has sunk everything into a sinkhole. Uh, uh, you know, it's just crippling uh, the nation into wind and solar and so on, as opposed to uh, going with nuclear, gas, oil, uh, expansion, expanding the energy base of the country, guaranteeing uh, an energy supply for the country. Um, uh, Trump's also committed uh, simultaneously to working families across this nation, uh, part and parcel of the same, and raising wage levels, as he said, you know, in, in his proposal to build 10 new cities in the West, that we need the raise, we need a quantitative leap in the standards of living of Americans, American families, young families, uh, right. with more children. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the thrust, but I think the most essential thing is to realize rather than sending trillions of dollars into a sinkhole of wind and solar, uh, we need an industrialization policy, not a deindustrialization policy to build our way out. Trump's committed to that. Well, I want to share my screen here for a second um, because here's a post we have on the LaRouche Pack website. It's your show, brother, whatever, whatever works which, best for you. Um, Here's a post we have on the website, which shows uh, Trump's message to American auto workers that he delivered <clears throat> on July 20th. Uh, it's his Agenda 47 policy video. And he makes very, very clear uh, that this is a complete assault, that Biden's policies will kill the American auto industry. He makes the point. Um, that the cost of a new car is over $50,000 at this point, which is outrageous. Uh, yes. He makes the point that uh, Biden is killing US manufacturing with this assault on the internal combustion engine. And here, as Trump says, these are quotes from President Trump, if Biden's assault is not stopped, American auto production will be totally dead. Um, so Brian, you and I have talked a lot about um, 
uh, the fallacy of this mad push toward electric vehicles. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the UAW has figured this out because for the moment, the UAW is withholding its endorsement of President Biden because they understand that this push toward electric vehicles as it's currently organized by the globalists and by the environmentalists is really a race to the bottom. Um, but uh, as, as, as you and I have discussed on a number of occasions, this push toward electric vehicles is completely un unsustainable right now because of our current electric grid. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, right there, we've got brownouts, blackouts uh, across the country down here in Texas, but also there in the Midwest, you've got a stage one emergency that's been uh, in place there in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and so on. This is crazy. Uh, we used to have baseload power, uh, gas, nuclear, coal. Um, uh, you know, it was boring. You know, it was there. It was there 24-7. People didn't have to worry about it. We de-invested, de right? This was the Obama, Carter, uh, uh, and Bi now Biden uh, agenda of deindustrialization. Uh, Trump went with tariffs. You know, there's still a 27.5% a, a tariff on the import of Chinese cars in the United States. You know, Trump is considered as well a, a tariff on imports of cars out of uh, Europe as well. Uh, we get a tariff of 10%. They have a, they, uh, we have a tariff on their cars of about 10, 2% on average, I think it is. But more broadly, it's the whole industrial base of the United States. Machine tools, the, the, uh, the uh, basic industry, steel, we're importing 25% of our steel, uh, aluminum, and so on and so forth. All of these things can be ramped up. Um, that's the intention of uh, uh, Agenda 47. Uh, wind and solar, look, you're dumping uh, 20 to 50 times as much in the way of resources into wind and solar as producing the same amount of energy uh, with nuclear, for example. 20 to 50 times the resources. I mean, human resources, natural resources, manufacturing resources. And, and uh, you know, so you're digging a hole and you're filling it maybe halfway back up. Uh, I want to go back to the other Brian Panabaker. Uh, you can unmute yourself, Brian. I, am, I muted you there for a second. Yep. Um, given this, this really aggressive approach of President Trump, uh, reestablishing his role uh, as someone who will protect manufacturing with tariffs and take on this whole green agenda, uh, how do you think auto workers here in Michigan and elsewhere are going to respond to this? Well, there's going to be strong support for it um, in spite of the media, which is like a PR arm of the Democrat Party and will cover for uh, Biden and try to make it seem as if this is a good thing. Um, what I will say is uh, a good example, the Chinese battery plant that uh, Gretchen Whitmer is giving a huge tax break to the Goshen Chinese Communist Party owned um, because all the businesses in China are at least partially owned by the Communist Party. Um, they're going to land that right here in the middle of Michigan, uh, near Big Rapids, out in the middle of the state. And we're already hearing reports that that's going to be used to spy on military bases in the Midwest. So it, it has a national security component as well as a um, you know, economic one. So I, I think um, giving incentives to uh, American companies to drill more, um, leasing more lands for drilling, reopening the Alaskan um, oil range up there that uh, Trump had open and uh, allowing us to tap the natural resources that we have here in our country, like President Trump wants to do, just makes a lot of sense. And if you allow people to examine the facts like the auto workers will, um, they will support that. It doesn't make sense to force ourselves into a dependence on China for uh, all the components that go into um, the batteries for electric vehicles or even the solar panels on uh, homes and all the other things. They have been buying up 
uh, rare earth minerals in Africa. They've established themselves under the guise of this uh, Belt Road Initiative around the world to kind of tap into the natural resources of a lot of these third world underdeveloped countries. And we've allowed ourselves to be put in a very bad position, but we do have the natural resources right here in our own country. Yeah. If we just tap the leadership to allow American ingenuity uh, and technology to tap into those resources. And that as is very much the intention of uh, President Trump's Agenda 47, which outlines whether it's building new cities in these areas in the West where many of the natural resources are, where you're actually building a, a, a capability to start developing the United States again so that we can be as self-sufficient as we can in all of these areas. As well as, as Brian mentioned, this question of a standard of living where one income could raise a family. I mean, you mentioned the battery plant and this isn't the only battery plant it's my understanding that the wage levels at these battery plants are much lower than About half. what you find mm -hmm. in your normal, you know, assembly line. Yes, it won't be a UAW represented plant and it will not be um, UAW wages. So rather than $32 an hour, I think I've heard uh, the workers in that plant are supposed to be paid uh, somewhere around $16 an hour. Uh, Brian Lance may be able to um, correct me on that if I'm off a little bit, but, um, the other thing is not all the workers in that plant are going to be American citizens. They're not going to be Michigan residents. Uh, hundreds of those workers are supposedly coming from China. So I think Gretchen Whitmer made a big mistake. And I think it, like I said, it, it also has national security implications. We, we're, we're allowing China to get its tentacles deeper and deeper uh, into our country. And it's, I think, going to be very dangerous in the long term. Brian Lance, you want to? comment in terms of, I, I think especially this question sure. of the wage levels is so important. Well, sure, absolutely. I mean, you, you look at it, I mean, uh, the United Auto Workers, you know, in, in uh, 1970, uh, you know, was, uh, was 1.5 million members. Um, uh, today, it's, uh, I think, stands at uh, 383,000, uh, if that, that's approximately right, I think. Uh, you know, uh, 1907, that's when the dollar was taken on the gold standard. You know, the greatest national security threat to the United States is the Fed and Wall Street and, and the, the revolving door with the deep state. Uh, you know, they cannibalized uh, American industry, uh, including if, if you were around then, you remember the oil hoax of the late 1970s. Um, uh, 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 and then after the 2008-2009 financial crisis, uh, the auto industry was put through bankruptcy, uh, bankruptcy reorganization, care of Lazar Frere and similar consultants, so-called, you know, and the UAW and its membership and its families got the shaft again. I mean, it, the point is uh, this uh, monetization, financialization of the economy, you know, which led to the outsourcing of um, uh, jobs uh, overseas, out of the United States, cheap labor and so forth, you know, has eroded our, 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 not just our industrial base, but our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities. Um, and, uh, you know, as President Trump is saying with Agenda 47, that's all got to be rebuilt. Uh, yeah, those battery jobs, uh, Brian, um, Pana Baker, uh, Becker is, is uh, last I saw, 1650. So yeah. you, you're right on the, uh, the, the button, as far as I know, on, on, the, on the wages that are being lined up for those battery plants. That's funny because that, that's almost exactly half of what the hourly uh, UAW worker makes uh, currently, uh, right in that $31, $32 an hour range. And mm -hmm. it took a lot of uh, negotiating to get back up to that level. We, we still have a ways to go. So for them, for the Chinese plant to pay $16 an hour is a huge step backwards for workers in Michigan. And even that $32 an hour still is not at the level if you compared it to an auto worker in 1959, where one income could comfortably raise a family of four. Today, $32 an hour as a single income still cannot raise a family comfortably of four. 
Correct. And that's what President Trump wants to change when he says in his Agenda 47, I want a quantum leap to revolutionize the American standard of living. So um, I want to thank both Brian's. <laughs> um, I think this was a, a very, very important discussion, especially from Brian Panabaker, essentially on the ground, precisely where this fight is being uh, waged. Uh, I want to give each one of you the opportunity to say a few words before we wrap up. Brian Panabaker? Well, I think we're witnessing uh, an attempt by the Democrat Party, National Democrat Party, and the weaponized Department of Justice and FBI who have criminals leading both of them, with the help of the CIA, I might add, to uh, destroy Joe Biden's leading political opponent, the man who wants to uh, make America great again, put Americans first, and put our priorities first, instead of Joe Biden, who seems to have been putting China's interests ahead of ours. So uh, we need to continue to uh, talk to the, our sphere of influence, our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, explain the truth and the facts to them. We all have a sphere of influence. Everybody needs to get out and, and try to talk to those folks and get the truth out to them because the mainstream media is just the PR arm of the Democrat Party. So we've we've got a tough uh, hill to climb, but we the alternative is unacceptable. We have to get Donald Trump reelected in 2024. You yeah, I, th I, I, th I think we can do this. Absolutely. You know, every every new uh, case brought against uh, uh, Trump and the corrupt courts uh, uh, sends his uh, approval ratings higher and higher. Uh, uh, so uh, I absolutely agree. Uh, getting out and uh, reaching out to strangers, you know, on the other side of town, uh, 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 all walks of life. This is a. Uh, uh, this is America that's at stake. Um, and uh, absolutely in these uh, subsidies, 30 to 40% subsidies, these are going to the to uh, auto companies, uh, battery producers in particular, but auto companies as well. It's not going to the American worker. You know, it's, it's a swindle. It's, it's raking it off the top uh, and it's building, you know, the equivalent of a giant pyramid. I mean, it's, it, it, these, these things do not function. Uh, this is a total waste. Um, so um, uh, I, I just conclude there. Let's let's make America great again as a manufacturing, scientific, and technological superpower. Well, I think that's definitely the message that can reach deeply into the Democratic Party base. Uh, in fact, uh, we actually went out to sort of the flagship plant of the Ford Motor Company, the River Rouge plant. It uh -huh. used to uh, used to employ 100,000 people. Now it's down to about, I don't know, 7,000, I think. But we got the Trump statement, his message to American auto workers, uh, out to some of these guys at shift change. Uh, and it was overwhelmingly supportive. So I am convinced we can go in and steal the Democratic Party's base and give Donald Trump the margins he needs to win. So I want to thank you both for joining us. I think we might do this again. This was a lot of fun. Thank Good. you both. Thank Good you, everybody. Thank you.